Today it's Lon Seidman and we're going to see a lot of low-end Windows PCs coming up in the coming months because Microsoft is now uh, making it easier for manufacturers to get Windows onto low-end PCs and they're doing that by essentially giving the operating system away. So the latest entrant uh, is this one from HP called the Stream 11. Now you'll recall we looked at the HP Stream 14 a few weeks ago, uh, which was a low-cost PC. I think it was under $300 or thereabouts. Uh, this one is under $200, so it starts at $199. Uh, this is an 11-inch notebook, has the same screen resolution as that 14-inch device did, 1366 by 768. Uh, but unlike the 14, this one is Intel-based. It's got an N2840 Intel Celeron processor at 2.16 gigahertz, so it performs better than the more expensive, larger PC that is also in the HP Stream line, which I thought was interesting. Uh, another interesting thing unrelated to hardware is that unlike the 14-inch one, you get a one-year license to Office 365 on this device. So you get basically Office to install uh, on your computer for uh, a year. So that's a pretty nice little perk as well. So other hardware features, it has two gigabytes of onboard memory, but only 32 gigs of storage. And that is an issue if you're a Windows gamer, because as you know, those games tend to be pretty large in size. Uh, the Windows operating system also takes up a good chunk of that hard drive. And of course, you have the recovery partition. So if you're doing things like music or video uh, or games, you'll probably want to look at something else because this really does not have a lot of internal storage. They give you a terabyte of OneDrive storage for a period of time. But again, that's cloud-based and you're going to have to you know, swap things back and forth over the network. So uh, you know, it's really good for doing work and some of the boring tasks out there, but uh, maybe not great for gamers and video editors and that sort of thing. Uh, the keyboard is pretty nice. It is a full-size keyboard, but you know, it doesn't have a lot of travel time on the key so I'm, it's not as comfortable for me as some of the Chromebooks are I wish there was a little bit more give to the key um, it doesn't really you know it doesn't push down far enough for me it's hard to explain but that was something that I noticed with it uh, it's funny the trackpad on the uh, 14 inch model I didn't like because it was too squishy this one is too stiff so they they, uh, they haven't gotten it just right yet it's certainly usable and it's you know it's responsive but um, it doesn't again just like the keys it doesn't really carry all that far so it's hard to know when you're uh, clicking on the right spot and I found too that if you're up higher on the pad it doesn't click uh, as well as it does when you're at the bottom of it. So you, a lot of, oftentimes I have a lot of misclicks because I'm not uh, clicking even though I think I might be. So uh, they could definitely uh, find some room to try to get those trackpads right because they still haven't figured it out yet. I'm not sure what's taking them so long here to figure that out. Uh, on this side, you've got the uh, Kensington security lock so you can lock it down if you're in an you know, education environment or anywhere else so you don't want people to walk off with your notebook. You have a SD card slot over here. And then on this side, interestingly, you have a USB 3 port here and a USB 2.0 port here. HDMI and a headphone microphone adapter as well. Now for the price, it actually performs quite well. And I've always taken these low-end PCs as kind of a grain of salt, knowing that we're not gonna get uh, the fastest performance out there, but it browses the web much faster than the 14 inch one we looked at earlier. Again, that's due to the Intel chipset on here. Uh, they've, I think they've got a little bit more experience with these low end chipsets uh, at Intel than AMD does at the moment. So uh, things tend to spring up pretty quickly. Uh, the page loads faster than it does in the 14 inch model. And uh, overall, it's just a better browsing experience. On the benchmark side of things, uh, the, the computer scored quite well. I usually run the Octane test from Google, which is a JavaScript benchmark test that I run on Chrome on all the devices I test it with. And uh, this actually performed uh, very, very well, scoring in at 8,020 uh, over that course of uh, 10 tests, which uh, puts it above most of the Chromebooks that I've tried, even ones running with the same processor as this has. So um, again, really impressive performance out of a little inexpensive computer running Windows, which is you know, a much more heavier weight operating system than you might find with a Chromebook. So this really isn't much of a gaming machine. It can run Kerbal Space Program that you're seeing here. It's a little sluggish right now. I haven't really tweaked the settings to reduce uh, some of the graphic qualities. So that might be why it's uh, a little bit more sluggish than I would think it should be with this processor on board. Uh, but you know, you can get some games to run on it. The modern ones certainly aren't going to be all that playable on here. Um, oops, I just blew up my rocket by accident. Uh, the modern ones won't be as playable, but uh, you can get um, you know, certainly uh, some emulation and other older things to work on it just fine. What I am gonna do though is boot up Minecraft because I know a lot of you will be interested in how that performs. So let me go boot that up. And here we are running Minecraft. It does get a little sluggish when you've got a lot of stuff going on on the screen. And again, I haven't really uh, adjusted down the settings at all, but this is kind of the default position. So uh, certainly runnable, uh, playable maybe. It's certainly not gonna run as nice as it will on a, a more expensive PC. But again, this is only uh, $199. All right, one more real world test, which will be Microsoft Office. We'll take a look and see how that runs. I'm running Office 2007 on here. Uh, so you can see how it might work with a more complex template here. And 
uh, you know, it looks like it does pretty nicely. It keeps up pretty well with what I'm typing, um, and it does a nice job of uh, rendering the screen here as well. So certainly for you know office tasks and doing newsletters and documents and that sort of thing, uh, this is going to be just fine. And again, this is the role that it was really designed to do, uh, kind of compete against Chromebooks for web browsing and light productivity. And I think uh, all of those things will do just well. So that is the HP Stream 11. It comes in two different colors, this very bright blue one and a bright pink one. And you also get a nice dual tone here uh, on the base of the device. I am really impressed with the performance of this uh, and the price actually, because it's you know, less than 200 bucks and you're getting uh, basically a complete uh, Windows 8.1 PC that can run just about any Windows software. And how well it runs, of course, will depend on how demanding that application is. But uh, this is definitely usable. And if Chrome OS is not uh, full featured enough for you, then you can pay the same money now and get a Windows PC uh, that might do the trick for you and pretty much perform about the same, maybe a little bit better, uh, depending on uh, what benchmarks you're looking at. But uh, I'm impressed. I think this is really cool. I think it's neat that this is actually running faster than the more expensive, larger uh, HP Stream 14. So that was interesting that they chose different uh, chipsets for different computers in their uh, streamline. And I am really excited, though, to see uh, what happens next at the low end because Chrome has really been eating market share away from uh, some of the other players that were in that space, namely Microsoft and its partners. And now we're seeing Microsoft kind of swing back uh, by giving away this version of Windows uh, to uh, PC manufacturers who want to make computers that compete with the Chromebook. So we're going to have some uh, really, uh, for consumers, some really good times ahead as we see uh, uh, the price is continuing to lower, uh, but the features and capabilities continue to increase. So uh, let's stay tuned and we'll keep bringing some of these low-end PCs to you as they come out. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching.